Carol is, or Carolyn, I'm sorry, Carolyn, there's too many C's, is going to quickly go through pages 8 through 14, talking about secondary transition considerations, goals, and objectives. She's amazing with goals. First, I wanted to just um, add a couple of things in, and what was already discussed. Uh, one of the things that really, I have a couple of pieces about the things that you were discussing. I just want to really go over quickly. Um, the educational criteria for special education in the state of Michigan, we do have several of those, but what I would, I always ask parents to do is to download those and to actually look at them and to see, um, especially prior to a meeting, see where your child fits within those criteria. Uh, because it's very important that your child's strengths, um, what the challenges are, when you go to a meeting and you look at that criteria and you say, is this going to be a fit for my child? Uh, especially if that's going to be what drives their services, even though technically the educational criteria or label that your child is given for to be used for special education services should not be the thing that drives their services. Their educational needs, their social and emotional needs, or should be the things that actually drive the services and supports that the IP team works on. So those are some of the things, it's, it's, and it's very important that you understand and know those, that you have that criteria in a meeting, and you, you're prepared to be prior to a meeting to be able to go in and, and discuss that. I always highlight those for the students that I support and say which of the things um, they do need within the academic, social, and emotional realms uh, within their educational process. I'm going to discuss the transition. And transition um, in the state of Michigan used to be uh, worked on at the age of 14, and then they changed it to age 16. But I really would implore you, uh, if you have a child that's turning from 13 to 14, just to really start looking at this stage of their academic career. Because this is what's really going to be the foundational basis for them as adults in the rest of their lives. Uh, we also, this will be the time frame when you are going to decide. Uh, we will be asked to decide, are you going to have your child on a diploma track or a certificate of completion track? I always tell parents, too, that an IEP is a static document. That decision that you make at 14 to 16 is, can change. You can actually change and say, you know what, I believe my child can achieve what's needed for a diploma, especially with things like personal curriculum, so that you can um, adapt what the state requires for uh, the qualifications or the, the um, criteria to meet a diploma track. So you really, those are decisions, these are probably the most pivotal decisions you're going to make for your child. And you also want to include your child within those decisions. Uh, but as we look at the actual transition document, I also want to give you I'm a resource person, I'm such a resource geek. So I always bring in, you know, I, I, I say one of the most, the best documents out there for transition is it's called Planning the Transition for School to Adult Life, uh, Considerations for Students with Disabilities. So just write that down and then we'll also get the link um, later. We can put it on the, the help, we can put it on your website later. Some of the things that we suggest for you, we'll have these available. But the title of the document is called Planning the Transition from School to Adult Life, uh, Considerations for Students with Disabilities. Um, one of the authors, author's last name is Fingles, F-I-N-G-L-E-S. It's a 24-page PDF that you can download. And it's, and it's really, for me, it's like the, the easiest thing to be able to prepare for a transition IEP meeting because what you're going to be doing is you're going to be looking at these four domains. Um, it's on page eight. You can go to page eight. Go to page eight, everybody. You have actually four domains that the district has to require, they have to meet those domain needs before they can exit your child from school. Even if your child's going for a diploma, even if your child's going for, an, for a um, certificate of completion, they cannot exit your child until those four domains are met and that you have answers and where your child's level, uh, present level of performance are in those areas. And a lot of people say that my district just wants to hand my child a, a certificate or even a diploma. You know, and, and a lot of districts will interpret IDA, the federal guideline, to say once a child or a student receives a diploma, they're exited from the system. That is not true. 
And I'll tell you, our son earned a diploma. We did not exit him from services. Um, and I'll tell you why it, it, that happened is because he did not meet the four domains. And you really have to press and make sure. And you have to, this, the document that I suggested to you will actually go over each of those four domains, the adult living, career and employment, community participation, and then the post-secondary and education phase of those domains, and give you the things that you'll need to be able to check off to say if your child has met those. That is probably, as I said, within this transition period in your, in your child's life, this is going to be one of the most um, foundational bases for everything that happens within their educational career from that point. You don't want to wait till high school to do this. Even though it says on the document, age 16, you want to start meeting, even in, and I, I started, we started our transition in elementary school in sixth grade, because we took the state clips for what a student should know by the time they graduate and started working on those goals within elementary school, junior high, and high school. And what I do with some of the students that I support is I look at their strengths within those areas and then we use those for goals to help support the challenging areas. So um, those are, as I said, those are the four things um, that you will need to be able to say the school has met those needs prior to exiting for your child. And then the same thing true, holds true for goals within this transition phase. Um, what we're seeing a lot in the state of Michigan is parents going into a meeting for transition, and this one page being all that's done. The, on page eight, that's the only thing that's being done. Um, a lot of what happens within page nine and then within page, because a lot of districts don't even have these in your IEPs, and then page 10. Um, it's very hard for a lot of districts to develop at age 16 what's indicated on page nine. Because a lot, a lot of times this involves, may involve outside agencies like Michigan Rehab Services, uh, it may involve community supports like your local ARC that may have um, secondary programs or um, supports uh, for community-based um, activities. So a lot of times when you go into those, you really want to do, you want to have a meeting with your transition coordinator within your district. A lot of people don't even know who that is, and that's one of the people that you will want at your transition first IP but you also want to meet with that person prior to them to the, having that IEP meeting because they're supposed to be able to supply you with information on who those agencies are within the community that you will be able to develop the support lists for page nine. And that's very essential because this is not happening in the majority of districts. Would you agree on that? Um, how many people here have their children right now in transition? Okay, have you met your transition coordinator for your district? Did you meet them before your transition IEP? Okay, and that's what's happening a lot. You're meeting that person at the IEP meeting. And a lot of times that doesn't allow you to find out what the things you're going to need, what the services and supports you're going to need on page eight to be able to meet those four criteria um, standards for the completion and exiting of your child in the transition. Uh, and as I said, a lot of people are, are, they go into the meeting and they say, they'll come out and say, you know, my district said my child doesn't have a capacity to um, obtain a diploma for graduation. And parents, this is the biggest concern I think at this stage in your students, in your child's life is, you think to yourself, if my child doesn't have a diploma, that's gonna mean they're not gonna be able to achieve a lot. That's not necessarily true either. You really have to weigh, especially considering your child's disability, if a diploma is going to be beneficial for them, especially in the state of Michigan. And I say that very cautiously because we are the only state in the country that has special education services and supports to age 26. But the thing about it is, is if your child's in a program from age 18, let's say, to 26, and they're not achieving anything toward those four foundational standards for transition to adult life, it's a meaningless program. And I say that to parents and they'll say, well, no, I want my child in that program from 22, especially 22 to 26. But if they're not obtaining stuff, it's going to be like at 26, it's going to be that same cliff that people are going to fall off that everyone else is doing at 21 in other states. 
and it really has to be meaningful, it really has to be something where your child is going to attain skill sets to make them ready for life. Um, I'm going to give an example, a couple examples too, that, um, that have worked in these areas, these four domain areas. A couple of things that I want to say too is, one of the things about community participation, a lot of times our kids have, they're, they're, they're taught road skills, they're taught daily living skills, but if they get outside of the educational environment or the home environment, those skills are not transferring in the community. So you want to make sure your, your child um, and the students that you work with, or, or, or if you have even, and I, and I say this, even your kids that don't have special education needs, even your kids that are in general, general education, make sure that the information and the education and the, the things that they're acquiring within knowledge are transferable into everyday life. Because if, if your child has road skills up the wazoo, excuse the expression, in, in, in the educational environment, or if you're working at a table at a at dining room table with them at home and they do really well, but if you go to the store and they cannot make change, that's the problem. Because that's going to affect their quality of life. Um, so those are some of the things that I really, but if you download that document, it's, it's really, really good. Um, I'm, and like I said, I like to have things available where I can go in a chart form, check stuff off on a box, uh, this is um, this one has, and I should have brought it up on the thing. But actually, within each of those four domains, it has uh, several things, check things that you can check off. So you can actually take this to your trans transition meeting with you and say, these are some of the things that I have concerns about. I want to work on goals in these areas. Um, I'll give a couple of examples. The so functional, just even for functional academics, and I, I already mentioned this. For things like math, budget, money, management skills in math, reading, uh, identif identification and comprehension of reading, which means literacy, the same thing with written express and expression and writing. Another thing too is uh, use, the use of technology. Uh, a lot of our kids use technology, they overuse it for the wrong thing. And I hate to say it that way, but they do. Um, one of the best ways to use technology, and I, and I say I use about I'm using it right now, is a phone, a smartphone, but use it for, to help with executive function. When I was growing up, or when I first entered the professional field, I had a Franklin planner, and if I lost that thing, my life would have went down. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to function. I had everything. My Franklin planner was this big. I'd bring it around, and I like got my Franklin planner. Everything was in there, and my whole life was in there. But now kids have a phone. You know, if they have, sorry, they have a phone or they have some type or an agenda. Um, but the thing is, they're not actually physically manipulating that. So when you have a child that doesn't process things and they're not physically manipulating it, it's not being, their brain isn't absorbing it. It's their executive function is dependent on something like technology. So then when it doesn't work, they don't, their executive function flies out the window. So you always have to make sure that there's a backup for that, and like their agendas at school, uh, calendars at home, or within their mindset, always remind them, what are the things that you would do if you didn't have it, have it within technology? Um, but once again, I'm, you know, I'm just looking at this document now, and it's, it's a ge real gem, because it has all these checkoffs, you can do check them off appropriate for your kids. You can actually use these to then prepare for goals. Uh, one of the other resources that uh, I would suggest that parents get is this was this is actually produced by the MISD, the Macomb Intermediate School District. Uh, it's called Michigan's High School Graduation Re Requirements: A Guide for Parents. It might be available on the website. I'm it, pretty sure it's it available. It will be uploaded as well yeah. as if there's anyone who goes to our website and makes the request. We can yeah, I think that it's and it's also probably available through the PAC yeah, in Macomb. But every district really should have some guidance document for graduation, and I would ask for that if you have not gotten it. The state also has a guidance document for graduation. But within this one, I really like it because it's very simple. It's what you need to do to develop an educational development plan, which is different from your IEP, but an ADP actually helps to focus directly on what the child's gonna do in, within their plan to graduate, and get a diploma or to do a certificate of completion. It also has a, information about personal curriculum, 
How many people know what personal curriculum is here? Okay, your personal, the personal curriculum is, could be your child's um, stepping stone toward a diploma, which normally may not have been, which normally would not be available if they weren't able to meet the educational criteria for a diploma. So what you want to do is you want to make sure, even prior to the transition, that you know what a personal curriculum is. Um, this document explains what it is. Um, it also explains, and, I, and I'm going to tell you this, four years ago, the ISDs didn't even know what a personal curriculum is. I, I would go in there and I would say, you know, do you have a document? Can I give something to parents? What are you doing within your personal curriculum? And then I asked in the ISD, Macomb, which is one of the biggest ones in the state, how many people do you have in, this, in Macomb utilizing personal curriculum? They had five students. Five. Which means those students may have been on the cusp of getting a diploma, all those other students, but nobody had even considered a personal curriculum. It is the stepping stone to be able to bridge some gaps between, if you want to achieve the um, diploma versus the certificate of completion. So one of the other things I want to mention here, are you doing me on time? And as I said, this, it, it, the next page is just uh, personal curriculum for special education students. Um, kids actually, not even special education students can, can get a personal curriculum as well. One of the other things that I wanted to give you as a referral is um, how many people know or have used uh, Michigan Alliance for Families? Okay. If you have not used them, uh, Michigan Alliance for Families, um, they can offer a parent peer to assist you walking through an IEP, even the document, the whole document. They also have one of the best, they are our state's PTI, which is federal, um, they, they receive federal funds um, from um, Washington, D.C. to provide parent training in the state of Michigan. Uh, they provide trainings in every part of the state on IEPs, on, on transition, on um, what other stuff. There's just so many things and they have them all over. I would, I would really advise you to use their website um, their transition uh, documents are excellent. They have a lot of resources on transition. And then uh, one of the other things that I wanted to add, say as a resource too for transition, and something that Carly, you had mentioned, uh, the age of majority. One of the things that's happening with students with the age of majority and then also within that transition process, school districts are talking to your children about what they want a lot of kids will say, yes, I want to graduate. Yes, I want to leave after grade 12. Yes, I want to do stuff. They're doing that without your child, without you present after your child turns 18. So one of the things I suggest to parents, even if you're not going to, I really also suggest that you look about what you're going to decide if, versus guardianship and versus power of attorney, a lot of those things prior to your child turning 18. It's very important to get that done prior to them turning 18. Because what I suggest for parents to do the week before your child turns 18 is to go and get a power of attorney, which is really easy. All you have to do is go online, download a power of attorney form, and say on there that you are going to be your child's power of attorney for educational, medical, uh, financial, uh, community living, um, anything that you can think that would, they would be needed for support and decision making. Give the school a notarized copy before they turn 18. And tell, in that document say, your child is not to make any decisions at, for educational services unless you're, you are consulted. They have to sign it, they have to agree upon it, because they are actually invoking a power of attorney. But do that prior to um, your child, prior to your child turning 18. Because I will tell you, I've had, I've had kids. Like no, so I have break before 18, or right. you even do it earlier. Like no, I would, no, I would do it. I mean, you can do it. At, some districts will say, well, if it's certified before that he's 18, they don't have the ability to do it before they're 18. You can have them sign it on the day that they turn 18. Um, I, we did it before. I, our son did it before, and I said there was an understanding um, at the age of majority that that would, he was was not going to be the person that would make all decisions. And that's really what you want to do because I've had district pull kids in the day they turn 18. Would you like to leave school? You know, you're not like it. But uh, okay, bye. I'm serious. It's happened. 
because the child, the child, we have one of the highest dropout rates in the state of Michigan for all students in the, in the country. So we have, and the kids that are dropping out in special education, they're dropping out because they're not being properly supported. Um, and then they're also being told that they can't earn a diploma. So what would, why would you say? One other thing I want to say really quickly before to parents about concerns about uh, diplomas. Your child can duly enroll in your community, local community college while they're still in high school. That can be within your transition plan. The high school then could pay for those classes. So if your child has good skills within math or, or, or some area that um, they can then use those credits toward school within their district, um, I would implore you to actually try to do that, even if they're not going to be able to earn a diploma. And this is why. If your child goes to a community college for two years and gets an associate's degree without a diploma, they can go for a four-year degree and get a bachelor's degree. So they might not have a high school diploma, they could still earn a BA, a BA or a bachelor's degree, which they can then enter into a career field. So, uh, the, you know, people say a diploma is the all end, it's not. Um, it can't actually end some services for kids with disabilities. So you really have to wait. It's very important to wait. Um, and you know what we can do? Do you want to do, yeah, wait for questions? We'll do questions after. Is there something? I was going to also talk about goals or, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. There's so good. much to talk about. Yeah, there's yeah. so much to talk about. Us, we don't want you to miss anything, but it's a lot. But if you can get what you got here, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, if you get, there's so many nuggets that they're trying to give us. One of the things we're going to do for goals going forward, and depending on how things go, we're, we're, we have our app, we're going to put this information out. I'm going to ask Carolyn to help me with some of the goals. She's great with the goals. Also, with the extended school year, that's important too. We're going to put some of that information.